Well, YouTubers, today I want to take a quick look at some crimpers that I got. I bought this on Amazon. I just want to compare. You know, when you look at the reviews, uh, I was looking at the reviews for the export or import, I should say. Uh, people were like, oh, well, what a piece of crap. I should have gotten with the client. <clears throat> so I said, well, let's, let's, let's try them. See uh, which one is better, if, if, if any. I mean, I think there's, there has been plenty of debate out there where people say, oh, everything is made in China anyway. But the quality seems to change depending on, on branding. But I think we can all agree either it's going to be way better than the chintzy little ones that most of us get on our cream tool, tool set. And come on, man, let's, let's be honest, this piece of crap. This should come with a trash can so you can toss it out. That's how lousy they are. And I have, you know, in my experience, I have plenty of crimpers and cutters like this. But man, once you get a good ratchet, that's the way to go. So let's take a look. This one actually came open. The package is so fantastic that it came open. This, I'm gonna need to get my chainsaw because obviously, or my lightsaber. Either way, I, to, to open this up, probably a nuke melt everything except the metal because these things are like impossible this this is like museum stuff you're supposed to just put it on a wall and never use it because to open this up requires alien technology i'm getting my cheapo harbor freight tools uh, scissors because to open this plastic you're probably gonna destroy the scissors anyway dude who the heck invented this crap i mean i bet this is the kind of plastic that Wolverine got infused into his bones, and that's why he's indestructible. Suck on that, Magneto. Not to mention, now I gotta be careful I don't call myself with this piece of crap. Let's do some crimping. So this is the cable I'm gonna use to wire my machine. This is THN12, gauge 12. Um, and you know, I just basically had to run it through a sleeve. I'll, I'll do another video on the technique that I used to do that in case you're interested. But uh, I got these from Home Depot. I think I'm supposed to say, what, my big box store because not everybody has some depots on the planet. But here in the uh, US, we either have Home Depots or Lowe's. So I do most of my shopping at Home Depot. I am not employed by them. But one thing that I have seen out there, when you buy these guys, obviously there is a rating. This is a 12, 10 gauge, so you, you're supposed to use 12 or 10. And uh, interesting side note, I was wondering what kind of current can this guy do? And I couldn't find anywhere in the planet that I could find information on a current rating for this guy. But somebody said something, something that makes sense in a forum. If it is rated for 1210, then that tells you that whatever current can go on this cable or this wire can go on here. Obviously, this, this, this guy must have been designed for that. So the thickness in there is for the gauge. Obviously, there is a diameter on the wire you're going to put through. You're not going to be able to put a, a six, uh, obviously, or anything uh, smaller than that. So 1210 should go in there. And of course, 12 should give me 20 amps. So this should be a 20 amp terminal uh, when you get the cheapos where you get like 500 for 10 bucks out of amazon um, i think what i've seen on, on some on some uh, uh, reviews is that the thickness is much less so you can imagine probably the rating is not very good so you don't want to uh, skimp on it definitely you want to make sure that you get the right deal <clears throat> now let's let's get the cheapo first so on any ratchet, you basically press and it opens up and then you can start closing it a little bit and it just retains its position. So that's one of the things. It frees up your hand. Uh, like on this guy, you would need to, I mean, this guy is so, so chintzy that it doesn't even move. Uh, so this is almost like, almost like ratchet technology. But even then, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's not there. The ratchet has this anvil that grabs your part, so that's very nice. So you wanna make sure that the, the upper side, that is the one with the indentation that goes up. 
I believe that's what I, how I usually have been doing it. I never got a class on this. Don't you think that there is a, a class at the university that says uh, how to crimp cables? There is no such a thing. This is like a tray, a tray thing. Then you put your, your cable in. You cramp the heck out of it. And you'll know when it's done because it will go back. I gotta say, that doesn't look incredibly amazing. Hmm. That doesn't look mega awesome, I have to say. So let's try with the Klein. Feels a little bit better, although I cannot tell you that I'm having an orgasm here. Wow, way stronger. Man, that looks like way better. This guy is not going anywhere, I can tell you that. So, I mean, you, you can even see this guy. It kind of closed in here, but it still left a gap. That to me, so this is the $20 tool, this is the $25 tool. Clients, so for five bucks, you get something that appears to be doing better. Now, is it because I didn't position this right? I'll do a few more experiments and tell you about the results. So this is the result with the Chingsi $5 tool. I guess it's kind of better than the 20. And here is the output with the Tycoon, but I had to go twice because the ampule is kind of thin, so when you get it on, on this side, the, this side remains open. So when you do it the second time, uh, it basically closes the entrance a little bit better, or I should say that side. This one is easier to articulate. The, uh, the ratchet action is just easier to articulate. But uh, the, the ampule is kind of thin, so unless you have this on there exactly what it needs to be, it is, it, it's not gonna grab it as, as you would have hoped. Obviously it's grabbing it back here, but not up here. And this is the output of the Klein. I do believe the Klein has a way better ampule, as you can see, it is basically two. So that helps a lot. And it basically grabs the conductors on each side. So basically on both sides of the barrel. And man, that, that is just incredible putting them side by side, if I can, it's kind of hard. But um, I, think, I think there is no question that those extra $5 make a difference. But you know, I mean, the $5 tool, this one, 5, 20, 25, I guess the $5 tool kind of works, and I bet there are plenty of equipments out there that were built with that. But, um, man, if you can scrounge up 25 bucks, this is a no-brainer. A no well, quick conclusion in the three, uh, using the three tools to crimp your cables for your machinery or any pro electrical project that you can think of. Uh, we have three tools. This one was, uh, I don't know how much it is because this came with a kit that had a bunch of stuff. So probably, I think I've seen them go for like five bucks on Harbor Freight. So roughly anywhere between five and ten dollars, I would have to imagine. This one was 20, this one was 125. Um, this is the easiest to use. You basically just press, there is no rusheting effort. Uh, but it really doesn't grab the connector until you are applying enough force with your hand. Uh, it's kind of flimsy, so it doesn't open, it doesn't feel uh, soft or it doesn't feel like any, any quality tool, but you know, obviously five bucks, what do you expect? I mean, uh, it's punching the metal alone, it's five bucks right there. Um, so you get what you pay for, obviously. The one with 20 has rusheting action. It grabs the connector pretty nicely. It's, uh, it's kind of soft to, to close it, so you don't need to put a lot of force. You can do it with a single hand, uh, but $20 gives you a better closing, except that it's not as, as good as I would have hoped. It's kind of okay. You may need to use it twice per connector. So you may need to do it twice depending on how good it, it crimped. It basically, it's only, it's only gonna crimp one side of the barrel. So that's the downside, you may need to do it twice. 
The client grabs amazing, closes perfectly. However, it, um, it is incredibly tough. Like I had to use both of my hands um, and I'm not a weakling, although maybe I'm a weakling, but this one you needed to press uh, with incredible force. Then again, it truly closed the, uh, the connector very, very well. I mean, this guy is not going anywhere. I do have to say, however, to pry the connector out of the anvil requires some, some jiggling because it was like super pressed into the anvil. So it was incredibly pressed in there. It just doesn't come out as easily as with the other tools, but that's okay. I mean, that's just part of the game. Maybe these tools will soften up with time. Uh, but to be honest, for five, if, if you're gonna spend some dough on this, I would rather go with the client, to be honest, because it's only five. If, if, if this was 50 bucks, then I would, I would say go with the 20 because the 20 will do the job. Uh, but for, for five extra dollars, um, man, it's just unbeatable. Quick detail on, on some things that you may want to know. Uh, there is a release button in case you want to open it. Let's say you have something in the way and you don't want to press it. Uh, you can just use that lever and it will open on the tool, releasing whatever you have in here. Um, that's kind of a standard of, of ratcheting tools. Although, you know, I have some ratcheting tools that I have to go with a screwdriver and poke it to open it up because sometimes um, like a, a typical problem is when you, you have closed too much and the cable won't go in and you have to open it up a little bit to accommodate, that happens quite a bit. So this uh, release is actually very convenient. Um, this tool also has the release so you can, whoa, it almost chopped off my, my finger. So I have to say I am not liking that release a lot, but be careful with this one. I guess you have to do it from an angle. And the release uh, on this is an amazing techno technology called using both of your hands. And you have to like send a signal from your brain to say open, like open sesame. <gasps> Look at that, it's opening. The release is amazing. Cheesy jokes that I cannot, I cannot go without. Um, Obviously, the last item that you need to be aware of is that these, these ratchet tools or these crimping tools, they have a color coding. This will tell you which crimp you're gonna use. These crimps are, are, are basically color coded per gauge. They will tell you which gauge you're gonna use. Like for example, in these guys, it's 810 or 12, 12, 1210, depending on what you wanna do. Um, I'm really not sure what does 810 start or 1210 means. I'm using, I'm using it with 12, but basically this is the gauge for your 12, um, this is the, the size for your 12 gauge. And obviously it is yellow. That means that you're gonna use it with the yellow ambient, it's pretty obvious. But these come in three different colors, blue and red, and that tells you where you're gonna use it because the size is different. Of course, the ambils are gonna be different. Well, I think that's enough blabber on crimping tools for this kind of spade connectors and rings. Uh, I hope you enjoy the topic and you can use it on your future endeavors. I want to thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel and I'm going to see you on the next one.